Time squared. The Enterprise discovers a Federation shuttle containing an exact double of Captain Picard from six hours into the future. The opening is Riker setting up a dinner for the other bridge officers. And at one point, Pulaski says, For much of the history of mankind, the breaking of bread was a symbol of friendship and community, something we've gotten away from in the 24th century. So friendship and community is not a thing anymore in the future? Does she have any experience in preparing food? Riker dumps a bowl of shit onto a skillet, and she's impressed by that. <laughs> she must not get out much. Ah, you have a practiced hand, Commander. And we get to that dumb joke, because they're eating some random animal's eggs. It's no wonder they taste like shit. It's such a dumb joke, because why is Riker making these eggs if they're not going to taste good? Why is he taking so much pride in it? Was he supposed to know what they were going to taste like? What if they were poison? It's some random alien egg. And is this a trend now? With weird, totally unrelated opening scenes? I hope not. The Enterprise picks up an automated signal from a lone Federation shuttlecraft, and they move to intercept. They pull the shuttlecraft in, and it turns out to be one of the Enterprise's own shuttles that is currently in the bay already. They find an unconscious Picard inside. Troy says it's as much Picard as the actual Picard. She can't be clearer than that, which isn't really a huge surprise. <laughs> I have never felt anything quite like this before, so it's difficult to put into words. I need to know what's on the shuttle's logs. Jordy and Data try to get the power back to the shuttle to find the logs to get some answers. They eventually retrieve them, but they're from six hours in the future, which means that the other Picard is too. Pulaski doesn't have any ideas either, but Picard tells her to wake up the doppelganger. And then the first time that we actually see Dr. Pulaski perform some medical treatment... She's so good. Why does she not have any assistance? I get that they have all this advanced technology, but if something does happen, she can't be everywhere all at once. Apparently Don Davis snuck on the set because they start stealing a bunch of music from the Matrix. They determine that the ship and the other Picard seem to respond in the opposite way of what is expected. The shuttle's logs show that the Enterprise was destroyed three hours from the present time, and Picard left the ship before it happened. They manage to wake the fake Picard up, but he can't communicate and doesn't even seem to be aware of his surroundings. They're having a discussion, and Worf presents the idea of a time loop, which the audience thought of a long time ago, but the really weird thing is that it's Worf suggesting something like that. There is the theory of the Mobius. A twist in the fabric of space where time becomes a loop. So Picard says they should continue on, but just be aware of what's going on. Which I would think you'd be aware of what's going on anyway, but... <laughs> Pulaski talks about the time streams lining up on the future Picard, and how he becomes more aware as they get closer. Troy senses that he wants to leave the ship, but they can't get any more information out of him. Picard tells Troy to stay with the double because she will be able to communicate with him first, which makes sense. At one point, Pulaski says... Part of my job is to anticipate problems. Then you are terrible at your job and should be thrown out into space. <laughs> Picard and Riker speculate on how the shuttle could have gone back in time. What force or phenomena could cause the shuttle to be thrown back in time? None that we've encountered. Some external force was needed. But we've never encountered a natural force that powerful. An energy vortex appears beneath the Enterprise. And the effects are pretty cool. Picard goes against his instinct and tries to leave, but they're unable to and start getting dragged in. Since the vortex's attention is only on Picard, he decides to leave to allow the Enterprise to break free, which reveals why he was the only one off the ship when it was destroyed before. Picard allows the future Picard to carry on his design course of action while trying to figure out what went wrong. At one point, Pulaski asks Picard, Do you know what you're doing? No, release him. I really like that answer. Yeah, I liked how he was being honest, but authoritative at the same time. Picard realizes that future Picard is locked into a fixed path and ends up killing his future self to end the cycle. 
I wonder if O'Brien knows anything that's going on. He spends all of his time in the transporter room, but he walks in with Dr. Pulaski and all he sees is Pulaski going over, checking a dead Picard, and not saying anything before just leaving. <laughs> What's going through his mind at that point? Picard orders the Enterprise to fly directly into the vortex. The second Picard on the shuttle disappears because Picard altered the timeline and prevented himself from ever leaving the Enterprise. Riker suggests it was all an illusion, which just shows how dumb he is. Maybe none of it was real. Perhaps we were all part of a shared illusion. Time squared. Overall? The episode had an intriguing start and a good overall concept, but there's not much to it beyond that. It's not a bad episode, but it's not anything special, and the abrupt ending makes it feel like nothing really mattered. I would give it a C+. I gave this one an A-. What? You said it was a singular idea, but I thought the singularity of that idea was really well executed. The story and the writing were compelling, and the characters felt like they were making sensible decisions for the most part. I like how Picard was really struggling with himself and his insecurity of not being in control or fully aware of what was going on, but it was solid character development on his part, and he played it well. And I like how they never reveal what that thing was, but they did it in a good way. They didn't try and play it off like it was nothing. The only disappointment is that they'll never bring it up again. I liked it as a character episode. I agree with almost everything except for the character development stuff, which I felt was very shallow. You never feel like you get insight into the way he's actually thinking about it. And I felt like that about pretty much all the ideas in this episode. I liked it. I didn't hate it. I just didn't think it was anything that great.